Hey, and welcome back to another video in my Vintage Tech Showcase playlist. And what I have for you today is the Nokia 5530 Express Music. The 5530 is the last uh, phone released by Nokia with the Express Music branding. Now I know that they did a reboot, I think, of a more uh, with a more recent phone, and I think they called it an Express Music as well. I'm not sure. I can't confirm. But this was the OG last Express Music phone. Now they did release phones later on that focused on music uh, separately. However, the branding Express Music was last used with this phone. Um, this phone was released in 2009. Um, it was announced uh, around June of 2009 and released on August of 2009. And it's a, a phone between the, let me grab that phone right here. Um, this is the 5230. So this um, this phone is somewhere between the 5230 and the 5800 Express Music. The 5800 is much better than this and that as well, but this is better than that despite being a bit smaller. This is not Express Music branded, though it has that quick uh, button there. This is just uh, a lower end phone. This one's the mid tier one and the 5800 was the higher end one before the X6 was released. So the 5530, like I said, was released in 2009 and it has some features that the 5800 has and obviously has some features that it lacks as well. And I'll be comparing it somewhat to that phone and the 5800 as well. So let's power this thing on and we'll see what it's like. Um, this phone uh, has a lot of scratches on its display, but you can expect that at this age. Let's have a quick go around of the phone while that thing is turning on. So up front, we have the 2.9 inch uh, resistive touchscreen. This is a resistive touchscreen. It's not capacitive, but we'll talk about it in a bit. Oh, that was really fast. It turned on quite fast. So the buttons are also resistive here, uh, but they're a better resistive. You don't have to press them with your fingernail. Uh, Nokia's touchscreens were much more premium than all the other resistive touchscreens at the time. They were actually no different from capacitive touchscreens because you don't really have to put that much of force to select something. Now I accidentally selected that. Uh, let's go back. So let's open gallery. And as you can see, I'm not putting that much force. So Nokia had the higher quality resistive touchscreen. Um, this again, like I said, this is not capacitive, but it's a higher quality resistive touchscreen, which um, can you can use the uh, pad of your thumb or the pads of your fingers instead of pressing it with a uh, with your nail or with the included stylus. Now this phone has a stylus. The 5230 does not. Uh, the 5A00 also had a stylus. So this, like I said, this one's in between the 5A00 and that. You can use the stylus if you want, but I think it's kind of unnecessary because the touch screen is so good on this thing. But if you wanted to draw and make use of all the other features that this phone had that you could do with the stylus, I guess you can go ahead and use the stylus for that. So like I said, 2.9 inch resistive touchscreen, that had a 3.2 inch, so did the 5800. So they cut down on prices with the, with the uh, screen or the, the screen size here. Um, it's 360 by 640 pixels and has a 16 by nine aspect ratio and about 250 pixels per inch. And like I said, with the uh, it it has it has a stylus, so it can use handwriting recognition. It does have handwriting recognition as well. So for a quick go around of the phone's body, first we have on the uh, left side, we have the flap here for the SIM card and micro SD expansion, I believe up to eight gigs. This flap is coming off and it'll fall off pretty soon. The, uh, the place where the, uh, the stylus goes in, a stylus holder, we got the barrel connector, the smaller barrel connector, the charger the smaller barrel charger, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, gotta have that, Express Music, um, micro USB, no charging of micro USB, just for syncing photos and music and other media. We got the lanyard strap, you can take the case off and put a lanyard, the lanyard meaning the hand strap. I'm not sure if this thing came with a hand strap, but the 5A00 definitely came with a hand strap. This thing may have, but I didn't get it when I bought this phone, I bought this second hand, obviously. Uh, you can put it through the cover and then you can put it on your hand. 
Um, the 5800 came with actually a guitar pick hand strap, which, which was really nice. A dedicated camera button with autofocus, half, half press to autofocus, and then full press to uh, take the photo. Nokia's lock key, the slide to lock, uh, really convenient. Volume up and down, power button, uh, nothing again on this side. Uh, like I said, that was there. The back, Nokia branding, 3.15 or 3.2 megapixel camera with LED flash. Uh, this is called, this color is called blue on white. So the blue rim with uh, a white color and the other colors included a, it, I believe it included a red on black, this blue on white, a gray on black, pink on white and yellow on white. So the first color was the accenting and the rest was the, the other color was the main color. So that was a quick go around of the uh, surrounding of the phone. Uh, up front, again, we have the Nokia logo, um, Express Music, uh, quick button here to press to access all your media, uh, accept call, home, deny call or decline call, uh, speaker grills up and down. I think the bottom one is the working one or the top one, I'm not sure, but stereo speakers, obviously with an Express Music phone. Um, again, Nokia branding, pretty simple front, looks elegant, looks really good. And like I said, that was the home button. So that was the go around of the 5530. So the Nokia uh, 5530 runs Symbian 9.4 Series 60, as you can see here. And it did get some updates as well. Um, this phone is updated to its max, I believe. Um, I really haven't checked, but I believe this phone was used quite heavily, as you can see with the scratches and stuff. So I'm assuming it's been updated to its max. Um, the OS is the classic uh, Nokia interface, as you can see there, you have the OE store, uh, internet messaging, a classic S60 Symbian interface, as you can see there. We get um, the home screen, which you can edit in settings separately. And we get the Express Music, uh, quick, um, quick media, we got music, uh, photos, share, videos, and the browser and all the other good things that uh, Symbian was known for. Uh, Pre-installed apps, we have uh, Bounce, which was a fun game, uh, RTGR, which was a racing game, and some of the other phones. I think the phones differed in terms of what they came pre-installed, uh, but you could also use the App Store and install whatever you want. Um, obviously, the OV Store is not working anymore, but um, I think there are ways to sideload apps onto these things, but I have not tried. Um, but let me know down in the comments if you know how to do that. I might want to try that out in the future. But Symbian S60, uh, good old Nokia uh, OS, uh, really stable at the time. Now it obviously has crashing issues and stuff, but at the time it was one of the most stable OSs out. Uh, really well built, really simple, and it's what everyone went for. Um, even though when the original iPhone was released, people still stuck with this because of the simplicity and uh, people were just more comfortable with how Nokia did their OS. But um, yeah, Symbian S60, 9.4. So powering the Nokia 5530, we have a 434 megahertz ARM11 processor, obviously a single core. This was way before the uh, LG Optimus 2X, the first dual core smartphone. Uh, so it's single core and it has a micro SD card slot with up to 4 GB. Or was it 8 GB? I can't, I'm not really sure. But 4 GB was included when this thing uh, was released. Uh, it came with the uh, memory card, but it's no longer in there when I bought this phone. I already did a video on this phone a ways back. You can find it up here. It was the cheapest Nokia that I could find on eBay, it was like $3 or something. And I was really surprised when it turned on and started working. Um, so anyway, four gigs of storage. Uh, the uh, me in included memory card has four gigs of uh, storage, but it's no longer, uh, it's no longer there because the original owner probably took it. Um, internally, it has 70 megs of storage. So internal 70 megs of storage. So I'm, that's what I'm using right now, the internal storage. And it has uh, 128 megs of RAM as well. So not a beast by any means, not even by 2009 standards, but Nokia's Symbian OS ran so well on low specs it didn't need that kind of power. It was somewhat like uh, Windows Phone. Windows Phone could run 
on really mediocre specs but never slowed down. Uh, Nokia Symbian was really similar, was really similar, and um, it ran on really uh, low end specs but really did an identical job to what other phones could do with higher end specs as well. So pretty basic stuff, nothing much, nothing major. Just a 434 megahertz single core processor by ARM and uh, like i said 128 megs of ram 70 uh, megs of internal storage and a 4gb included sd card slot which is no longer there but i think this thing can go up to 8 gigs as well so now let's discuss the camera on this phone now just ignore this tape right here because i've put in a battery that that's not this phone's original battery it's a bit thicker than it should be so the tape is holding the back cover down uh, this phone's original battery is long gone so the camera on this phone is a 3.2 megapixel uh it's not carl zeiss optics or anything that was reserved for the 5a00 obviously but it's a 3.2 megapixel autofocus camera with led flash with a it has a single led flash as you can see there and it can record video at 480p at 30 fps so when you compare it with the 5230, the 5230 does not have an LED flash and it's a fixed focus two megapixel camera. This thing, like I said, is in between. It's not as great as the five megapixels, 3.12 megapixel camera with a dual LED flash and the five the, the 5800 had an excellent camera. So it's not as great as the five uh, 5800's camera, but this camera can take some seriously good photos uh, with speaking with reference with 2009. Um, obviously, they cut down on the Carl Zeiss lens because they didn't want to spend on that because, again, this was in between that and the 5A00. So, uh, it's a pretty decent camera as well. Um, the front does not have a camera, so there's no selfie camera, but the 5A00 did have a selfie camera, but these two didn't. Uh, so we, there are no selfie taking with this phone. So I guess you'll have to use the back camera to take selfies, but it's a pretty decent camera. And I was honestly quite surprised by how, um, the, how the photo quality turned out. Cause I'll be putting some photos in a bit. Um, and here you go. So I'm really surprised that a phone from 2009, the photos look really decent. And actually in certain photos, they look quite good tape and don't get me wrong, take it in perspective. We're talking about an almost 12 year old phone from 2009. This phone is 12 years old. And honestly, these photos look quite nice. Um, I've seen budget phones, like super budget phones from 2021 have worse cameras than this. So yeah, th I was really surprised at the photo quality of this phone. Um, I'm not even going to bother including video quality because it's just basic 480 at uh, 30 FPS or maybe I might so yeah here's the video quality so Nokia 5530 Express Music video sample at 480p 30 FPS this was the maximum that this phone could do um, ignore the mess on my two tables there that's where I keep my phones and iPods um, the ones that I feature on my channel. Um, as you can see, this video isn't the greatest of all time, but for 2009, it was, uh, I'd say, mid-range video quality. So that was the camera uh, discussion there. Uh, pretty decent camera for its time, and it does shoot some really good photos even in 2021, even at this age. So thumbs up uh, for Nokia for making uh, such a great camera, even without the Carl Zeiss lens and doing it on a cheaper budget than the 5A00. Again, really good stuff there. So jumping into all the additional features of this phone, like now, like I said, it had Express Music features, so that was its main selling point. Uh, and to be Express Music, all the Express Music phones had stereo speakers. So the speakers were really good uh, in, in terms of 2009 standards. 
let me quickly go to uh, profiles and I'm gonna put like a let's put uh, let's let's put a ringtone up uh, Nokia original ringtones you can see how loud the speakers are things are getting better let's see um let's see what we got here so like a song sort of thing my channel is not monetized so I don't think I'll be in trouble here oh Nokia tune this should be good let's see um why isn't it playing oh let's try ringing volume uh oh there we go let's try that again Try it full volume again. I don't know if you can feel that, but it's so loud the phone vibrates. Now blasting it at full volume, uh, it's gonna blur it out, but on medium to high volume, it's actually a really good speaker. So 2009, mind you, 12 years ago, this thing had an excellent speaker and this it's plenty loud as you heard. It was vibrating the whole phone. So the Express Music lineup really did stand for what it is, uh, music oriented devices. Uh, going on to other features, this thing, like I said, has Wi-Fi, unlike that, unlike the 5230. Um, it has uh, Bluetooth, obviously Bluetooth 2.0, radio, uh, micro USB 2.0, where, where's that port? So the flap is gone. Um, annoyingly, it does not have USB charge like a lot of Nokia phones, even more later Nokia phones didn't have USB charge. I think the Nokia N9, well not the N9, the N8, I believe the N8 didn't have USB charge either, but I could be wrong. I'm, I, I, correct me down in the comment section if I'm wrong, the Nokia N8 I believe didn't have USB charge either. <clears throat> this thing uses a, uh, the, the newer newer as in uh, compared to the thicker barrel connector. This uses the newer, slimmer barrel connector. Uh, all Express Music phones use that. Let me get my hands on the bigger connector for comparison here. Here it is. So that's the bigger connector. That does not go in there. That's the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So yeah, it had a headphone jack. Obviously an Express Music phone wouldn't make sense without a headphone jack because I believe this thing also shipped with a really good pair of headphones. I personally had a 5800 back in the day and I still do. I'll show it to you guys when I go back home for the summer. Um, that phone had a amazing pair of headphones that it shipped with like super bassy, really clear, clear. For 2009, that was just amazing that they included that in the box, amazing pair of headphones. And I believe this one also shipped with probably a lesser pair, like not as good as the 5800s, but still a pretty decent pair, I believe. Um, it has a proximity sensor, it has an accelerometer, basic stuff, uh, music player, fl Adobe flashlight. Um, it did have Adobe flashlight, Adobe, Adobe, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, et cetera, et cetera, basic phones of a, basic functions of a normal phone. Um, the battery on this, the original battery was a thousand milliamp hour battery. It was a BL4U. Now I have this phone's battery somewhere. Is it here? No, nah, I can't find it. So the original battery was a BL4U, but I put something else in there. I think a BL5S or something. I don't know. Uh, or is it this? No, I keep forgetting what I put. I, I don't want to take it off because the phone will stop. Uh, the, st the phone will stop working uh, if I take the battery out. But the original was a BL4U, but I put something else in there because its battery, its, its own battery when I got it was uh, shot. Um, and like all Nokia's, it had amazing battery life. So about four and a half, well, not four, can't really remember. Let me double check. I have my notes here. Oh, so about five hours of talk time and music play up to 27 hours and standby time up to around 340 hours. So um, those numbers were usually underestimated because when it came to battery life, Nokia's had amazing battery life. And I remember my 5800 used to last for days if I turned down the brightness and um, just use my headphones. <clears throat> That thing used to last for days. I'm pretty sure this thing did as well. And the 5230 was known for excellent battery life, probably better than the 5800 and this thing as well. 
So no question there, no one's arguing Nokia had excellent battery life. Uh, that is a common knowledge among everyone. So that was the retro review of the Nokia 5530 Express Music from 2009, the last OG Express Music phone. And I say OG because there's a chance Nokia will do a Express Music phone in the coming future. And I hope they actually do because that'll be a great selling point. But I hope they include extra music features and excellent headphones, out of this world speakers. But I'm pretty sure they'll pull it off in some way or another. And we might even see a rebooted version of the 5530 itself. So anyways, that's it for this video. And don't forget to check out my Vintage Tech Showcase playlist for other vintage phones that I've covered. And also don't forget to hit that like button and check out my channel. And if you like what you see, please consider hitting that subscribe button as it helps me out a lot. Thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my next video.